Those videos that you've seen that says it's over for Airbnb investing because of either rising interest rates or the summer slowdown, well, those videos are wrong. And those videos that are saying everybody's quitting Airbnb, those videos are actually wrong too. Most people don't know how to run an Airbnb or short-term rental business, and most people are looking at it like a real estate business. Very few, some people are failing, and in this video, I'm gonna help you fix that. So that way you don't fail. If you invest money into either buying a property or doing arbitrage like me or co-hosting, this video will save you from the three major mistakes most people make when getting into an Airbnb business. My name's Sean Rakujic, making three plus million dollars per year in the short-term rental space. I've made more than $10 million on Airbnb alone. I have over 120 properties. I work zero hours a week, and we're still growing through all of the drama. So let me teach you how to be successful like me and not to cry like them. Let's jump in. Welcome back everyone. So I just got back from speaking at a short term rental convention a few days ago and everything just started clicking together. There are so many people who are at this convention just like the people that you've been seeing on these YouTube videos saying that everything is falling apart. These people are mostly people who are buying properties but what they are are they are real estate investors buying property to run Airbnbs out of them but they're looking at Airbnb and real estate the exact same way. And this leads me to number one, the first mistake that most people make when investing in an Airbnb business business is that they assume that it's going to run just like a real estate business and that cannot be farther from the truth. And let me tell you about the time that I went homeless as a way to wrap this one up. I was a sales professional in 2009 selling newspaper subscriptions. I went homeless in 2009 after a follow up with that company. I was living in a van for about four months selling random stuff just to get by. And I eventually got out of homelessness and started my first successful business also in the newspaper industry. Four years of business growth later, I was signing leases for me to live in because when I went homeless, I I also got evicted. So through my LLC, I rented an apartment. This was like back in 2011, but I was doing it for years. This turned into me signing leases for other employees within my newspaper business to live. I was relocating people and giving them free housing under my LLC. So effectively, I had four apartments under one business name, and it was serving a function. People were staying in a furnished apartment, much like an Airbnb, but they were working for me in my sales organization, and I was making money off of their sales. And that's how the money from the apartment was coming in. Well, that has nothing to do with real estate, right? Even though I signed a lease for a property and I'm holding a furnished property and someone is living there and I'm making a value that had nothing to do with the real estate. It was that I wanted to relocate some of the best salespeople from across the country to come work in Houston and that made me money. Well, when they all moved out, I had three apartments that I needed to pay rent on that I didn't have any other plan for. I was just gonna have employees stay there. But then I put it on Airbnb because one of my friends mentioned that they stayed in Austin at a house. Voila, that was my first exposure to Airbnb end of 2014. So those three properties that were like corporate housing for my sales employees became furnished properties on Airbnb. I started making money on Airbnb while never investing in real estate, while never getting into, reading books about, studying, or even caring about real estate. So I came from the opposite end. And from there, I have grown since the end of 2014 until today from three properties that were used for sales team and then grew it to 120 fully automated Airbnb properties. None of the time have I ever bought property, taken out a mortgage, taken any investors from the real estate industry or read a single book about real estate. It has nothing to do with real estate. Now, the way that that made money wasn't because of the value of the property. What it was is I took a property that was in a rental market that I could get for a certain price. I transformed that real estate product, that apartment into a hospitality product. The furniture, the, the, the ease of check-in like a hotel, the concierge service, having shampoo and conditioner, having coffee, having TV with, with movies and streaming channels on it, and all of that stuff that allowed somebody to come in, check in, drop their bags, stay the night, and leave. That is hospitality. And most people that get into Airbnb look at it from the lens of real estate. What is this property worth? What can it cash flow? If I Airbnb it instead, I can cash flow more. And they're focused on cash flow. So when you watch these other influencers in the space, they're misleading you on what you're really doing if you're trying to get into Airbnb. They're trying to convince you to invest in or buy properties that will perform well on Airbnb, but for the sake of real estate. And to be competitive on Airbnb, you need to kind of ignore all the real estate product stuff and focus really on what will generate long-term safe cash in the Airbnb space. This is how my business survived COVID, where some people didn't, and this is how my business is still growing 
and printing just as much money in, as normal here in the summer of 2022, where a lot of people are saying that there's this huge summer slowdown and nobody's booking their spaces. The reason why is because I rent apartments and put them on Airbnb, which is a cost competitive product. I have in-house housekeepers that I pay 12 to $15 per hour, which lowers my internal operating costs. So my cleaning fees aren't insane. While everybody's raising their cleaning fees because the cost of labor is going up and they're using third party companies, my cleaning fees are staying low because I've built a company, a hospitality business. So I'm scrappy, I'm lean, my product isn't inflated in price, where real estate people, they'll just inflate the price with the market. They have no concept of competitive pricing. They think that everybody's gonna raise their cleaning fees and everybody's gonna raise their nightly rate because they are following the real estate market. My business is chugging along in the hospitality space and putting everybody to shame. Mistake number two, this affects both buyers and arbitrageurs. They're not doing their market research and they're not doing their market research the right way. See, real estate people will research the market as far as the comps for the home, but they're not doing research on Airbnb. You can do market market research on the Airbnb platform. You can find out how many listings there are, what size those listings are, if those listings are getting bookings, and then at the listing level, you can go through an entire listing and discover everything about that listing. How many photos does it have? What are the quality of the photos? What is their nightly rate on weekdays, on weekends? Are they changing their price? Now, this is a big deal. If a listing is changing their price, that means they're doing something called dynamic pricing. You have ran into a professional host and dog ear that listing, because what you're looking for is you're looking for listings that are successful you're gonna ask yourself why. Why is this listing successful? So if you find a listing that doesn't change its prices, that has yeah, decent photos, but obviously not professional photos, whose listing is written kind of like just a normal person would write their listing, without really any magic in the description, but they have a lot of reviews. And when you look at their calendar, the calendar is booked in a lot of spaces and their nightly rate is actually pretty healthy. They're not like just charging bottom of the market. You have found a basic listing that's not professional, that's profitable. And by finding a listing that's not professional, but profitable, you can feel confident in entering the space. You can create a listing just like theirs, but do a better job of them by getting professional photos, using dynamic pricing and, and et cetera. And you will make more money than them because like products should sell for the same and if yours is slightly better, you should be able to get the same price more often or even sell for more. So what you're not doing, what most people are not doing, is doing the proper market research, looking at the market through the lens of Airbnb. And this leads me to the videos where they say, everybody's quitting Airbnb. Well, in what cities are everybody quitting Airbnb? Because they're not quitting Airbnb everywhere. I can talk about Houston all day. And you know what happened in Houston? It was actually a little bit of a Bernie Madoff kind of thing. There are real estate agents that make money when they sign leases. Me and my best friend, Sean Ray, back in Houston, 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, started picking up tons of leases, first for my media company and then for Airbnb. He must have made a quarter million dollars in commissions off of my lease's lifetime. I would be surprised if he didn't. Now that's a good amount of money to make, right? These real estate agents in Houston realized that they can get 40 or 50 different people to all sign leases at the same building that allows Airbnb and make commission on all 50 people, thus giving themselves a six figure payday. What happened is in four, five, 10 buildings in like, Downtown, Midtown, Medical Center of Houston, leasing agents and apartment locators got together and crammed a bunch of people who knew nothing about real estate or hospitality, knew nothing about Airbnb, and put them in spaces saying, you're allowed to run your short-term rental business here. People just bought furniture and put the stuff online. No dynamic pricing. They did get professional photos. They spent a good money on their furniture, but they otherwise had no hospitality experience. Now, what happens when you take and you inflate the inventory of one product by say 5X in one neighborhood and no one knows what they're doing? A lot of people are gonna lose money. Now, my friends, the people in the space that I've been working with for years, they're still in Houston. I'm still in Houston. A lot of us are making money in Houston, but the people who started there and did not study a single thing, market research included, failed. Anybody who got these apartments should have first looked at the environment. Before they got their lease, they should have checked the neighborhood, seen how many listings there were, and seen if those listings are making money or not. They would have discovered that this apartment locator, real estate agent person was trying to shove them in a building that had 40 or 50 other Airbnbs in it, and that none of them were making enough money for that building to make sense. That is their fault. It's not the industry's fault, it's because people got hopeful and bought the lie that the real estate agent was selling them. Real estate agents are at fault for the failure of a lot of arbitragers in Houston and places like Atlanta. It's not 
the short-term rental market's fault, it's shady real estate agents. Now this hints at number three, which is that most people try to make this passive without the front end work involved to make it so. Now this business can be passive. I'm a prime example of it, 120 plus doors, zero hours a week. I just bought a bus, ripped out the seats, turned it halfway into an Airbnb and took it on a road trip. I went to Electric Daisy Carnival, lightning in a bottle. I will be at places like, hopefully Electric Forest if my tickets go through, Burning Man, Shambhala, Bonnaroo maybe even, a an event called Arcadia. This year's my year off. I'm going to a bunch of festivals, having fun, listening to music, making friends, because I can. But the first few years of automation was, was a journey. And here's what you need to automate that other people aren't doing. First thing you need to do is you need to start doing dynamic pricing. Dynamic pricing, raising your prices and lowering prices to meet demand in real time will get your calendar completely full at the most money you can make. I heard someone say at this convention I spoke at that if you're 95% occupied, you're not charging enough. Well, that's actually a lie, that's false. If you're 95% occupied and you're not ever changing your prices, then you're not charging enough. But if 10 days are booked at 1,000 bucks, 10 days are booked at 700 bucks, and 10 days are booked at 150 bucks, you could very well argue that that was the most those individual days were gonna get. So understanding the concepts of dynamic pricing to maximize your revenue and then start to hire the right people in your company. So step two is you start hiring housekeepers. Now you need multiple apartments or multiple houses to hire housekeepers by the hour. You wanna own their time. And if you hire those housekeepers, run them by the hour, then you will buy down your costs of operations, which means you can raise and lower those prices to the true number that they need to be without being afraid of your housekeepers eating up all of your revenue. If it only costs you $25 to clean an apartment and you collect $75 for your apartment, you still keep 50 bucks towards your rents. But if it costs you 60 bucks to clean an apartment and you charge $75, you only get to apply $15 for that day towards your rents. And that's kind of scary. So get your housekeeping costs down by hiring people by the hour. I teach this in a free course. My YouTube channel, here you are, but if you go to my Facebook group, the hosts of Airbnb Automated, get in there and there's a free course. We start talking about all this kind of stuff. Next, once you have a housekeeper or two, you'll hire a supervisor for them. That'll make it so that way they continue to do their job well and you don't have to be the one managing them directly. Once that supervisor is doing a good job of managing the housekeepers, you also train them to talk to guests, help with guest check-ins, help with guest checkouts. You might even trust them enough to do purchasing, right, where they buy new sheets, new towels, cleaning supplies. Next, you're going to create a dynamic pricing automation using something like Wheelhouse. I've completely automated my pricing strategy on Wheelhouse so it does everything itself. Now, I would recommend that you want Watch it for a while to make sure it does what it's supposed to do, but at this point, if your pricing is automated, if your housekeeping supervisor is managing the cleaners and maybe even hiring new cleaners as needed and managing your inventory levels and guest stuff, the only thing you really need to worry about now is charging guests when they break things, and that's resolutions and arbitration. This is mostly automated at this point. You need multiple doors to hire one housekeeper. You need to triple that to hire three housekeepers. You should probably pick up a few more if you wanna hire a supervisor and start to give them other things because you need to pay them a salary. You need money in the middle to pay them so that way you can keep it. I'd say you can automate an Airbnb business at about 25 apartments maybe eight houses, 10 houses. If you do that, you can go and travel just like me. But I don't think you should stop here. I think you should get more ambitious because scale makes you more dangerous. It buys down all of your costs and with scale you get all these discounts. It makes you more resilient. You can do things other smaller businesses can't do. You can start negotiating deals with furniture companies, getting special financing for stuff like that, and you can just keep growing. It gets easier after 25 doors to scale because everything just starts to make sense. So why stop at 25? Come, meet me at 100 and let me know in the comments once you hit 100 doors because you can do it. I promise you that if you start looking at Airbnb like a hospitality business, you start looking at the numbers, how the money is generated outside of the real estate market, you'll stop following these real estate people into the Airbnb space. Now you could follow them in kind of because anybody who can make money in long-term rentals can make way more in short-term rentals. That is a truth. That is the truth, but that does not mean that you should come at it from real estate. If you can just say, hey, I'm in the Airbnb space, what is Airbnb? And just ignore bigger pockets, ignore road build, ignore, uh, man, I'm sure there's a few other people who are real estate people who started doing Airbnb. Just it, learn the real estate stuff from them. If you wanna buy property, buy property and learn how to do that from them. But they are not hospitality professionals. Some of them have five, 10, 15 doors at most. And you know, most Airbnb gurus online only have 15, 20, 25 doors also. Stay here, ask me questions, I teach for free. Obviously, this is what I love to do, but if there's one thing I can do to save your life in this space, is just know that real estate and hospitality 
are completely different and I've proven it. I have 120 doors that have nothing to do with the real estate industry. If you're gonna ask my like unsolicited opinion about what I really think rental arbitrage is, is it's a blend of sales and hospitality. Because when I go to a landlord, like in this building, there, there's two floors of short-term rentals in this building and they go to a landlord and say, I want two floors, but I want a discount on rent. I want free months of rent. And my students are getting six, eight, 10 weeks of rent for free from a landlord. That's free cash in their hand. If you sign a two year long lease and get 10 weeks of rent for free, that's money in your pocket. Cause when you run it in the short-term rental, you make $4,000 a month, but don't have to write the, like don't have to write the rent check for two, plus months, that's instant money. And you can't get free rent without learning to sell and negotiate. So rental arbitrage, learning to sell and negotiate on the front end and then deliver beautiful hospitality on the back end. Use that and you'll make so much money, I promise you. And of course I teach how to sell, how to negotiate for free on this YouTube channel. And if you want an easier access to all those videos, again, join my Facebook group, the hosts of Airbnb Automated, and there's a free course waiting for you there. Again, my name is Sean, the biggest educator in the short-term rental space. Ask me questions, I'll give you answers. Thank you guys, and I'll see you on the other side.